I don't have cell service in this area. There's nobody I can call that's gonna help me. I think I'm gonna make the wise decision to, ooh. No freaking way. They paved this? Oh, this is luxurious. This used to be all a gravel downhill grade. Okay, it turns to gravel up here. Dude, that is really nice. That is really, really nice. This ain't bad. It's always awful when they just lay down fresh gravel through here and it's so deep and the whole bike just wants to go crazy. Well, let's hope we can find a good camping spot. This place is first come first serve. So it pays to get here early. Now this is what I'm talking about. This is beautiful. <sighs> Alrighty, let's set up camp. lighting might be a little harsh, but I wanted to give you guys an updated video on everything I am bringing camping with me in the year 2023. I will say I have made a few moto camping gear videos over the years, and this one in particular is going to be how I am packed out with my Royal Enfield Himalayan. So obviously the Himalayan is a much smaller motorcycle. Um, I do have limited space on the bike, and the campground I'm currently at has zero facilities, zero cell service, electricity, water, wood, everything. So I had to bring everything I'm working with today on this little motorcycle. So that's firewood, that's water, that's all of my cooking utensils, my change of clothes, and all of my camping gear and my filming gear. First thing on the list, I'm using my brand new Revival Cycles dry bag. This is a completely waterproof motorcycle dry bag. Um, I shoved almost all of my camping gear in that bag, except for a few side bag stuff that I put on the motorcycle itself. So something that fit in this bag was my actual Lone Rider ADV tent that I'm using. This is kind of large for a smaller backpacking style tent, but this is a luxurious high quality tent that I wanted to bring with me tonight so I could sleep comfortably. And it fit in the bag like a glove. So a little bit more about this tent. I have made a few videos. This is a very, very spacious two person tent. It is designed around motorcyclists specifically. So you can pack this on your adventure bike. You can pack it on your cruiser motorcycle. It takes probably about five to 10 minutes to set up depending on how drunk you are. <laughs> and it has like an amazing interior. I'm absolutely obsessed with this tent. I'm even more obsessed with its big brother, the one that you can stand up in. Even though I will be sleeping in a tent tonight, I did bring my lounge hammock. I think I just bought this on, I actually got this at Walmart and I'm gonna have all of the links to these items down below if you guys are interested. But this is a hammock, it's not really meant for sleeping, it's very thin. This is more of a lounge style hammock. I bring this with me on some of the bigger motorcycle rally trips that I go on because when you're just tired and you wanna lounge around in the sun and read a book, this is exactly what this kind of hammock is made for. And of course, since I have the hammock, I also brought my tree straps with me. These are reinforced tree straps. They're very safe on bark and they have um, heavy duty carabiners built in. Of course, um, I couldn't find the actual bag that this sleeping bag came in, but this is my zero degree Big Agnes sleeping bag. It is by far my favorite sleeping bag I have ever used because it's a very, very high quality down material. It's huge, so I fit snug as a bug in a rug in this thing. And it's really nice for temperatures when they get super cold or even if they're kind of hot, because all you gotta do is open it up and you sleep super comfortably. The best part about this sleeping bag in particular is how it works with my sleeping pad. Now the sleeping pad that I'm using on this trip is my Sea to Summit. I think this is the Ether Light 
extra large sleeping pad. One thing I will say about all of the gear I'm using, I hate batteries. I hate rechargeable pumps. I don't like taking fans with me even though I do get hot. This bag is almost as self-inflate as they come. You use the actual bag to inflate the sleeping pad and it fits inside my sleeping bag. I'll show you that here in a second. But um, this is my sleep setup tonight, so inflatable pad as well as my inflatable pillow. I think I got this on Amazon. I've been using this for years. It's so comfortable. Next on the list, this is my camp chair. I also got this on Amazon. The thing that I really like about this chair in particular is it comes with extra wide little feet on it so this is a really heavy duty rating for heavier people like myself to sit in comfort uh, but sometimes you sink in the mud when it has the little feet so this one has extra large feet and i don't sink in the mud this is just my toiletry bag nothing fancy it has shampoo conditioner wipes toothbrush toothpaste stuff like that um, i can put like medicine in here if i need allergy medicine this is just a little black bag i got from walmart speaking of accessories um everything that i have in here is my lantern my lighting I have a little wood hatchet for chopping up small wood, as well as my party lights and my little metal wooden stove. Wood stove. Metal wood stove. <laughs> Next up, I have my camp kitchen. Um, I believe I got, so this is a 10 inch skillet in the bottom of this. I got this from Moto Camp Nerd. I'll have it linked below. And then I have my little camp kitchen set up that I think I either got from Amazon or Walmart. I'm going to have it linked below, but super affordable, incredibly easy to clean. That's like my favorite thing and very durable. So this is like my kitchen part. And then this is my burner, but I just keep them in this bag. So it's all together. And of course, who can forget the cooler? This is a collapsible Coleman cooler. It's like a soft bag. So if you put ice in it, it will leak, but um, it does a good enough job just keeping cold drinks cold and food at a decent temperature until you're ready to cook it. Okay, I think I have my campsite all set up for the most part. So of course, you know what time it is. Good. I let them set long enough so that they're not all explodey. You're kind of far away. Do you see that? This is like the most beautiful campsite I have ever stayed at while I've been in this campground. I've actually been trying to get this site for years. And the reason it's been hard for me is either it's already all booked up or <laughs> it's really hard to tell, but this is down kind of an impressive hill. Um, I'll show you here in a second. So I could probably get down here on the Dyna pretty easy, but I would feel pretty nervous taking my road glide down this because it, there's a lot of roots, there's a lot of pine needles, so it's kind of like loose surfaces and we've been getting a lot of rain, so it's kind of muddy. But the Himalayan did great. Where is that bike? Right there. It did so good. Even like fully loaded, packed down with all of my stuff. It didn't slip. It didn't feel crazy. So it's amazing like the night and day difference in confidence that I feel on like gravel and dirt roads when I'm on the Himalayan. Makes things more fun. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. I just wanted to be able to go a little bit more off the beaten path with my campgrounds. And this is one of those campgrounds. This campground is actually pretty mild compared to some of the others a few of the other ones in this area you have to take some pretty gnarly like gravel roads just to get access to them so maybe one day jordan and i'll come back and we'll check out some of the alternative grounds together but i just like this site is amazing come here i'll show you okay so i'm gonna show you this hill that my himmy had to ride down all right so it's kind of hard to see on camera, but we are definitely walking up a big hill. This just slants all the way down to the water. But I'm absolutely obsessed with the tree coverage. Like I have this whole area to myself. It's amazing. All right, at the top of the hill, the road continues on down there for a bunch more campsites. And this is at the very top. It really wasn't too bad. I'm just glad it wasn't muddier. So beautiful. All these trees, hammock heaven. So serious when I tell you guys that 
It could be 35 degrees Fahrenheit, and if I'm setting up my campsite, I'm still gonna sweat. <laughs> I am so excited to show you what we're cooking for dinner tonight. It is officially my dinner time, but my fire pit is like right in the blasted sun, so I'm gonna wait. I'm getting a little hungry, but I figured this would be a good time to just kind of hang out and chat with you guys. These flies get in here. It's so, I'm trying to like lighten it up. It's so dark. <laughs> I actually just had another biker buddy ride in and camp like literally right next to me. He is on a Honda Rally. I don't remember what the C CL, it's a 300 basically. He said he's been out riding all day and he just got to camp. So he's setting up camp now and hopefully maybe I get to go over and hang out with him later once he's done setting up. We can hang out by the fire because I was like so stoked to see another rider out here. Um, ironically, the last time I came camping here was almost exactly three years ago. Uh, you guys have probably seen that video, but I didn't renew my fishing license this year, so I can't go fishing right now. I'm sure I could, but that's illegal, so we don't want to do that. But just like sitting on the water and camping next to the water compared to where I was last time where I was just like inland stuck in a bunch of trees this is a night and day difference oh my gosh the sun just went away <gasps> I might be able to start a fire but yeah look you can see the glistening sweat on my forehead it's so hot I swear to god you guys I'm not making this up I was about to just go grab my my chair because I think I left my book in my chair look at what I just discovered there is money <laughs> oh it's five bucks <laughs> I thought it was gonna be like 50 bucks uh, and my book is not in there so I lost my book somewhere oh sun just came back out damn it my fire pit is right in that sunlight I am not gonna be able to cook dinner without sweating to death <sighs> all right we should probably cook dinner now. So if you guys are wondering, I told you I have to pack my own firewood for this campground because I can't just go buy firewood. I'm actually testing out the Dura Log Dura Flame. Uh, allegedly, I think it's one log is supposed to last as long as an entire bundle of firewood. This is safe to cook over. So I think one log is supposed to last three hours I'm not sure I'll let you guys know at the end of this video but um significantly smaller just one log I think the entire bundle you get three logs and it was like 15 bucks so I mean if this thing can actually burn for as long as a normal bundle I might start buying these <laughs> supposed to do is light the paper and the log lights with it I I think it's lit okay okay we're doing good well of course for dinner tonight I'm making a ribeye brought some sea salt with me this is gonna be good I've said it before and I'll say it again. There is nothing like cooking a ribeye over an open fire. Listen to that sizzle. Even though a ribeye is probably a fairly sufficient dinner for a woman of my stature, we're not just having a ribeye tonight. Let's throw the shrimps on the barbie. Bar barbie? I'm not Australian, I can't say it. Shrimp and a bobby? Shrimp on a bobby. Shrimps on the campfire. isn't as charred as I would normally like it, but it's not overcooked, so that's a win. Let's try a bite. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm, that's really tender. Those are perfect. Mm-mm. This is exactly the kind of camping night I wanted. I will say those Duraflame logs, I cooked my entire dinner with one log and I don't even think it's 50% done. I'll count that as a win. Holy crap, a beaver just swam by. You see him? Where is he? Right there. Mr. Beaver friend. Boy, it was big. <laughs> See you later. That was Kenny. He's camping right next door to me. Such a fun bike. Well, one thing I wasn't really looking forward to tonight that kind of caught me off guard is starting to get a migraine. So I think I'm actually going to turn in kind of early tonight and hopefully this uh, headache goes away. That's no fun. It's such a beautiful evening. Why do I got to have a headache? Well, here's something I have never done before. Um, I am actually not even going to camp tonight. I don't know what's going on. Out of the blue, I developed an insane migraine. I'm incredibly nauseous and I was feeling that way before eating tonight um, and I thought eating dinner would help so it didn't and I just feel I feel really awful I feel really awful to the point where I don't have cell service in this area and if I get worse there's nobody I can call that's gonna help me so I think I'm gonna make the wise decision to Ooh. The um, I don't feel good. Uh, I'm going to pack up camp and head home. And it's an hour and a half ride home and the sun is setting. And so it's not smart, but uh, I'll keep you posted. I can't do this. Not tonight. I can't believe I'm doing this, you guys. Seriously, for the first time ever, I'm leaving a campground before I've camped. <laughs> uh, I don't know what is going on with me. Uh, it does not feel good. I am not looking forward to the fact that I have to ride home on these dark, twisty country roads. And what's even more nerve-wracking is uh, there is a bobcat running around here right now. That, I've never seen that before. Check this out. I cannot believe that. Look at how freaking big that thing is. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> well, have fun on your, uh, on your adventure. I really like your bike, man. It looks great. Thank you. <laughs> I really did not want to do this. I don't, something about it just told me that I was like, you need to get out of here, man. You're not feeling well. You should probably just go ahead and go home. This sucks. I am so glad that I'm, you know, close enough to home. I have an hour and a half ride, but we're gonna make it. Now, the only thing I can't figure out is why my cluster is like, oh, this is so bright. Why is that so bright? I can't see anything. I don't know if there's a way for me to turn it down or what. All right, well, I'm, I'm really not feeling good and I'm gonna have to focus on the road, so time to shut the camera off. All right, well, it is actually the next day. I will let you guys know I'm feeling a lot better. Um, Kenny hooked me up with some medicine right before I left the campground, and that did really help me ride safely back home. It was a very unsafe ride. There were a few things I learned about the Himalayan that I needed to remedy immediately. One of those was the tripper uh, navigation little cluster, the app that comes on the Himalayan. It, it, it was 
set to a different time. So I think it was set to a time in India, which was like a little over 12 hours or 11 hours ahead. So it thought it was daytime when it was actually nighttime. And so that ride home was a little bit very nerve wracking because I was blinded. Um, like I said, I was really, really disappointed that I had to pack up and leave my own campsite for the first time ever. That I've never done that before. Um, I think I was suffering from heat exhaustion once again. The, uh, the older I get, the more I just learn new things about myself and my physical health. And I just don't, I don't know how to, you know, prepare for it other than to experience it and learn like, okay, next time you can't be in the sun that much. It wasn't even that hot. That's the crazy thing. It was like a beautiful 75 degree day, but being in the sunlight for as long as I was, that's what kills me and like you guys know I joke all the time about being a vampire but I'm being honest like I can't be in direct sunlight for that long it really starts to wear me down so that was uh very intimidating very scary and it made me realize like I have some upcoming trips that I am genuinely gonna have to better prepare for so I am sorry that this video wasn't you know the really nice relaxing wake up and get coffee and oh i really wanted to do that but this is just a lesson you know listen to your body and uh luckily i was safe getting home the roads were crazy the bike did wonderful uh, i did have to update the the time on the motorcycle so i wasn't blinded anymore i think uh the videos on the himalayan are probably going to take a quick little break because i have some travel plans coming up and the bike is ready for the 300 mile service first break-in service. So I am already chomping at the bit to get the bike serviced because I can't wait to get back out there and experience some more dirt roads. So um, remember the reason I got the Himalayan in the first place was to build confidence riding off-road, gravel roads, stuff like that. And I am getting very, very excited for the Get On ADV Fest that is coming up this July in the Black Hills of South Dakota. So if you guys are interested in checking out that event, I will have a link down in the description. I went last year and I didn't even ride off road, but I had the time of my life. I think I enjoyed the ADB Fest way more than I enjoyed the Sturgis Rally. And that's saying something because I had an amazing time at the rally. Like I said, bike did great, gear did wonderful. My new Revival Cycles dry bag fit everything I needed in it. And I really did have a good time in this video i really did even though i got <laughs> sick all right well if you guys like videos like this please do me a favor give this video a thumbs up and if you haven't done so yet please subscribe to the channel i have a lot more adventures coming up and i can tell that over 50 percent of you are not subscribed so if you subscribe to this video i will know youtube notifies me when i get subscribers based on which video they watch so i really i really appreciate it it's been really hard trying to continue to grow the channel but i hope you guys enjoyed and until my next one as always, you be good and I'll see you later.